All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the third part of the show, we're going to talk about a pair of quarterbacks. Uh, We're going to talk about Russell Wilson as well as Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, like I said earlier, uh, so last night I had everything set up, had all my, uh, you know, segment titles in, what I was going to talk about. And um, this is around like midnight. And um, all of a sudden I see... Russell Wilson going to the Steelers. So now I have to go back in and, you know, rework some things. Um, I probably could have put this in as my second segment, but I I left it in as number three because um, the Eagles topic, no offense to the Eagles, but they kind of just got pushed to the pushed to the end. Um, but, um, yeah, so I had to rework some things. But, yeah, so Russell Wilson, he signs with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a one-year deal, um, you know, making well, now the Broncos are going to pay most of his salary. Um, do I have the uh, specific uh, amount that the Steelers are paying? Not on this. Yeah, so uh, the Steelers signed him to a one-year, one point two million dollar contract, uh, and the Broncos are paying thirty-seven point eight million next year to not I, I, to not play for the to not play for them. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean. You know, we'll see what ends up uh, happening there. So, he obviously, Russell Wilson, he talked with the Giants. He met with them. He also met with Pittsburgh. And, of course, he ended up signing a deal with them. Uh, he met with team officials, including uh, head coach Mike Tomlin and new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith. Um, this agreement came after a six-hour meeting and a mutual interest between Wilson and the Steelers. I know that's something we talked about. There was mutual interest there. Um, now he joins the Steelers with Kenny Pickett as the only other quarterback under contract. Mason Rudolph, who started three games last season, is entering free agency. Uh, Wilson's tenure with the Broncos ended with a record of 11-19 and in, in his starts and no playoff appearances. The Broncos will face an $85 million, million dollar dead money hit over the next two seasons due to Wilson's release. Um, you know, obviously, Wilson spent the previous 10 seasons before joining the Broncos with the Seahawks, making nine Pro Bowls and winning a Super Bowl. Uh, he, he expressed his desire to win during a recent podcast interview, citing it as his top priority. Um, Wilson has a successful record against the Steelers with two wins, eight touchdown passes, no interceptions, and a 147.1 passer rating in two starts. Uh, so, now, what does this mean for the Steelers? Well, it's an upgrade. It definitely is an upgrade. But that's about it. Um, because now, because again, it's what Russell Wilson is coming off of. He's coming off of, well, a first year, first year in Denver was very disappointing. That was a disaster. You know, Nathaniel Hackett was in over his head. You know, he ends up getting fired during the regular season. You know, we know the whole story there. Now with Sean Payton, yeah, Russ was good. 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Um, you know, at times the offense though was inconsistent. And that kind of led to them, well, they got off to a tough start, got hot in the middle of the season, and then towards the end, you know, Russ ends up getting benched. Jared Stinham ends up finishing the year. You know, when they went up against teams like the Texans and the Lions, you know, they couldn't win those games. I mean, the Lions blew them out. The Texans, they had a chance at the end, but Russ, you know, I think Russ had three picks in that game. Um so, yeah, I mean, the numbers do look great, but also, like, you have to look at some games, and, you know, Russ wasn't... And, it, again, there was a lot of checkdowns um, as well. So, what does that mean going to the Steelers? Again, I think it's an upgrade. I, I think Russ should definitely be the starter. Um, I, I think, they're, obviously, they're going to have Wilson and Kenny Pickett battle it out to see who is going to end up being the starter, but it should be Russell Wilson. Um you know, I, th- that's kind of why you're bringing him in. Well, you're bringing him in because they wanted to bring in competition, but I, I think ultimately he should end up getting the starting job. But again, I, I think he's an upgrade. Um, again, you're not paying him that much money. So, you know, I mean, he ends up being a disaster. It's just for one year, and you're not really, you're paying him the, the, the minimum. Broncos are paying everything, uh, mostly everything. So... Um, you know, if Russell Wilson was coming from, coming over from the Seahawks, then I'd be, I'd be like how I was when he first went to the Broncos. Oh, this is a great move for the Steelers. Russ is going to do great for them. Right now, I'm not, I'm not so sure. 
you know, I, I feel like we might be getting, I, I think he'll be all right, but I'm not expecting the Russell Wilson from Seattle. I'm just not. Um, I, again, he's an upgrade. He's an upgrade over what they've had over the last couple of seasons. And listen, the Steelers have been a team that they're always fighting for a playoff spot every year. Mike Tomlin hasn't finished with a losing record. The worst he's finished is 8-8. Eight and eight. So I expect the Steelers to be a team that's going to contend for a playoff spot. But, you know, you look at this division. We just talked about the Browns. You know, you got a healthy Joe Burrow coming back next year. And the Ravens. Now, the Steelers have given the, given the Ravens problems. But right now, I kind of still favor, um, you know, those teams over the, over the Steelers. Now, again, I, I think quarterback situation, I mean... We just talked about the health of Deshaun Watson. You know, maybe you put Russell Wilson over Deshaun Watson if you're ranking the quarterbacks in the division. Um, just because Deshaun Watson really has not put it together with the Browns since he's gotten there, and he's been hurt. You know, Russ, again, is coming off of a season, you could say whatever you want, but yeah, 26 touchdowns to 8 interceptions is not bad. Again, I, I talked about, you know, the, the, there were some check down, a lot of check downs, and... You know, they lost against, you know, when they started to get hot and they ended up playing teams like the Texans and the Lions, they ended up losing those games. But still, I, I mean, if you're just looking at the touchdown to interception ratio, it was not bad. It's a de decent quarterback. And the Steelers could use that. So I, I would probably put Russ over Deshaun Watson right now, slightly. But they're right there. Because Burrow and Lamar Jackson, of course, are ahead of him. You know, Burrow's healthy. Lamar Jackson, obviously, coming off of an M another MVP. You know, put those. You know, put those two ahead of them. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, for this, for, for the Steelers, again, low risk, high reward. You know, maybe because um, maybe Russ comes in and he turns back the clock, and he's the Russell Wilson that we saw all those years in Seattle. Um, maybe just maybe Denver just was not a good fit for him. But you know, this is kind of like his last shot because if he ends up not playing well then that's probably it for him and it's just crazy because you know all those years in Seattle he was really building up that resume I mean his second season the Seahawks go to the Super Bowl and they win it now again they had a uh, one of the greatest defenses of all time in the Legion of Boom but you know Russell Wilson was a part of that and then they made it to the Super Bowl the following season now, again, if the Malcolm Butler play doesn't happen and they end up winning that, who knows? They could have really, you know, turned into a dynasty. That kind of set them back and things unraveled. But then once all those guys left, it became Russ's team. And, and Russ was putting up good numbers. I mean, he was a guy that, you know, was an MVP candidate year after year almost. And then he goes to Denver and, you know, I was on the bandwagon of, oh, wow, the Broncos are going to be back. They're going to be a really good team. And then it just ended up not happening. Um, and now he's getting older. Now he's on another team. And, yeah, Denver, how are things went in Denver? It's kind of why I just have that feeling of, yeah, I don't, I, I, I think he'll be okay, but I don't think he's going to propel the Steelers, you know, to the promised land. But we'll see. The Steelers have a very good defense. Of course, they got the quarterback of their defense, TJ Watt. I mean, he's the quarterback of the defense. Um, you know, their defense has been good year after year. Uh, and, you know, they have some good players on offense. Maybe with George Pickens, you know, we'll see. Deontay Johnson, he could be traded. That's another wide receiver that could be traded this offseason. You got Pat Fryermuth, who's a good tight end. And, of course, you have a nice one-two combination with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. So, you know, I, I mean, Russ is stepping into a decent situation, but let's see what he does with it, if he ends up being the starter. And for Kenny Pickett, you know, it, the pressure's on now. Um, now you got some competition. So, um, again, this is stuff we'll talk about, you know, throughout the offseason. Um, but, yeah, I spent pretty much most of the segment on Russ. But now let's get into Kirk Cousins. So he's going to test free agency. Um, you know, Kevin O'Connell had some comments, uh, the, uh, the head coach of the Vikings. He had some comments on that. Um, basically indicated in an interview that Cousins has earned the right to bet on himself, suggesting the team is willing to let him see what offers are available Elsewhere, um, 
And, you know, we'll see it, how that ends up going. Does he go, you know, to the Falcons? The Falcons are a team that's that could be trying to get him. And that would be a good – I mean, they have a lot of playmakers on that on that team. Um, and, you know, they're missing a quarterback. And Kirk Cousins can step in and be that guy if he's healthy. Again, coming off of the Achilles. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, is it going to be one of those things where he goes, he tests the market, sees what well, – he sees what offers are out there. He goes back to the Vikings and see if they'll match anything. Um, and if not, you know, then, you know, the Vikings uh, might have a problem. Because also there were, like, rumors that they could be in on Russ if they end up losing Kirk Cousins. Well, now Russ is off the board. So, you know, what are they going to end up doing? I mean, trade for Justin Fields? No. Um, I, I don't know. I, I still think... Kirk Cousins is ultimately going to end up back with the Vikings, but the Falcons are definitely in play. And again, I think, you know, now I think it's kind of a, a step down from the Vikings just because, again, you know, you're, you're playing with the best receiver in the NFL and Justin Jefferson. But, you know, you got Drake London and Kyle Pitts. and Well, I mean, get an upgrade with B. John Robinson being your running back because, you know, Alexander Madison and Cam Akers, that combination really didn't work out. Unfortunately for Cam Akers, he got hurt. Another player that, you know, suffered an Achilles injury. But, yeah, the, the running game was not good for Minnesota. And they kind of missed Dalvin Cook. And I think Dalvin Cook kind of missed them with how things went with the Jets. But um, I think the Falcons would be a good fit. They're an up-and-coming team. Um, they were, I, I saw, like, so I saw, like, oh, the Broncos could be in on him. But then there was another article that said uh, the Broncos will not be going after Kirk Cousins in the offseason. So we could put that to bed. Um, but we'll see. I, I mean, again, I, I personally for me, I think he should stay in Minnesota. If, um, but, you know, maybe the Vikings, they're, they're a little, you know, iffy just because he's coming off of an injury. Um, I mean, he was going to have, he was, looked like he was going to be an MVP. He was playing like an MVP candidate before he got hurt. Um, and the Vikings were really, you know, getting themselves back in the playoff conversation. And I think if Kirk Cousins doesn't get hurt, I mean, who knows what happens? They they might make the playoffs. Um, you know, but we'll see. There there's definitely teams that have interest. Definitely teams that are out there that, you know, need a quarterback. Um, also, another team out there, the Commanders, who were. You know, that was Cousins' old team. Well, he didn't play with them when they were the Commanders. He played with them when they were the other name. But, you know, that's a team that, you know, whether it's through the draft or maybe they get Kirk Cousins to come back, you know, they're in the market for a quarterback. So, um, again, another thing to keep an eye on, but at least Russell Wilson, Baker Mayfield, they got new deals. Um, you know, still waiting on where Justin Fields – because now let, let's say – the Falcons get Kirk Cousins. I mean, again, I don't know if the Bear are the Bears going to trade Justin Fields within the division if the, the Vikings need a quarterback. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, I you know the Steelers they signed Russ. You know, Kirk Cousins is either going back to Minnesota or the Falcons. So like, we'll see, we'll see. Um, that again, still waiting on what's going to happen there, but. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe he ends up getting traded to the, to the, uh, the commanders, uh, Justin Fields. I don't know, but only time will tell, but that, yeah, that's, so that's pretty much it when talking about, um, these two quarterbacks. Let me know what you guys think about the deal, uh, the Steelers made with Russ. How do you see him fitting with them and Kirk Cousins, uh, testing free agency? Does he end up going back to Minnesota? Does he go somewhere else? Um, like I said, only time will tell. So with that, we're going to take our final break of the show. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the Eagles. Uh, they re-signed Brandon Graham. And also Fletcher Cox announced his retirement after 12 seasons. So we'll get into that. That'll be the final part of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 